I'm very excited, very excited to see that the, the alumni has been, have been extremely happy and excited about this global gathering. And as you see in the room, it's a truly an international gathering with 220 participants from over 44 countries with uh, 140 alumni from over 30 countries across Africa. This is truly a celebration. And it also, it's also a strong signal that we all share the responsibility for finding breakthrough solution to Africa's development. I think I can say with this excitement that uh, this is the beginning of the Africa's Renaissance celebration. You've got experts from all walks of life. You've got experts from business leaders, entrepreneurs from across the country, academics, researchers, and that truly is what we needed because we want to provide alumni with a broad range of exposure to what is going on across the continent. And you listen to our keynote speaker talking about how you take uh, natural resource uh, from raw material to final product. And you see the, what he talked about, the lateral linkage, which r requires uh, mathematical problem solving skills. It's also fabulous. So I just wanted to mention that this is paving the way for something that is upcoming. I, I think it's uh, realistic. And let me say why. You know, if each country in Africa has to decide, uh, were to decide to build its science base, even one institute by, by country wouldn't be enough. So it's, a, yes, there are going to be challenges. Challenges in terms of resources. Challenges, and when I mention resources, I talk about funds and human resources. Yes, there are going to be challenge. challenges in terms of, you know, how we fit into the local higher education system, you know. But beyond the challenges, I think I see more opportunities for Africa. Take this, imagine this for instance. It took 5,000 physicists to work on the discovery of the Higgs boson. You know, the critical mass of students is the one we're going to generate in the next, uh, by 2021. So if you imagine that critical mass of alumni, well-rounded mathematicians, you can see the transformation of Africa because once we reach that critical mass of math problem solving skills, something is going to change and it's going to change forever. It's only the natural resources that have been attractive to the whole world. Now has come a time, and with natural resources, if you only base your economy on raw material, you're, there's no value additions. There's not much you're gonna gain from just exporting raw resources. If you want to maximize you know, the return on investment, you have to invest in transforming raw, raw materials into final product. That's where you get raw mat, uh, final products and value addition. And the reason why it's uh, so important, it's because you need high-end skills. And when we talk about high-end skills here, the first thing you think of is mathematical sciences, which are key to any modern economy. So it's a very reasonable uh, to plan for Africa to have high -end, smart investment in high-end skill in order to get enough of a lot of value addition uh, in, in its raw uh, materials exploitation. I just wanted to mention this, that, uh, you know, it's obvious, math has always been key to understanding the past and transforming the future. Africa has reached a stage where its development will only be sustainable if only Africa invests in high-end scale. There would be no Facebook without logarithms. You know, without uh, trigonometry, there will be no pyramids. Without calculus, there will be no bridges. So you wonder, on this continent, we need a lot of bridges 
So how do you do bridges? Then you have to import mathematicians, expat, expatriate in, onto the continent. And Africa is sp spending a huge amount of money on paying for international expertise. It can grow homegrown scientists on its own. Homegrown scientists open to the entire world, Ho working in full partnership with other scientists from across the world. But the time has come, and now is the time for Africa to take a quantum leap towards becoming a global player. And the only way you do that is to invest in science. The magic thing, I would say, is the culture, the learning culture, the learning environment they find at Ames. Most of them have never found that kind of environment in traditional universities, an environment in which women are empowered, feel, feel empowered to do science. Women are not discriminated against. That's the environment they found. They found a conducive environment where the lecturer is just a facilitator of the whole learning process and where students are, 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 are trained to become independent thinkers, you know, critical thinkers. It's the only way of getting them to be problem solvers. So that's the magic they got. They got three things. The learning environment, the conducive learning environment, the culture of aims, and the independent thinking process.